Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Today I thought we'd talk about trigonometry on the slide rule. Now you can do an awful lot of good trig on the slide rule, not only sines, cosines, and tangents. You can also do the lesser known functions, secants, cosecants, and cotangents. But more importantly, you can do something called arc sine, arc cosine, and arc tangent. Now we're gonna go through all of those as we go through the episode today. So let's cue up the music and get going. Now, to begin our discussion of the trigonometric scales on the slide rule, let's go over the two main ones. The first one is going to be the S scale, and that's sine and cosine for an angle between 5.7 and 84.7, 84.5 degrees. Now, what's the meaning of this range? If you look at the sine and the cosine for these angles, they'll take the form of 0 point something 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 something. Now, they're put together on the slide rules so you know where to put the decimal place. Now, on some slide rules, especially European slide rules, but not so much American or British ones, you'll see something called a P scale. And the P scale is very similar to the S scale. And the reason that you have a P scale is that if you're looking at the sign of a number on the S scale, if you read straight down without moving the cursor, you can read off the cosine. Of the same angle. Likewise, if you're looking at the cosine of an angle on the S scale, you can read down onto the P scale and read the sine. It's a very convenient scale to have. Everything else being equal between two slide rules, if I had a choice of getting a P scale, I would take that one. Now let's have a look at this on an actual slide rule or two. Boy, the camera really doesn't like this yellow from the picket slide rule, does it? But I think you can still see the S scale right here, and there's no P scale on the picket. Likewise, here's a student level picket. You'll see the S scale here, and again, there's no P scale. You'll see the S scale right here, and just above it is the P scale. Now, the way you read these is take a particular angle that you want to look at, say 10 degrees. If you put the cursor right on 10 degrees, and notice that there's a red 80 directly underneath it, and read up onto the D scale. That represents the sine of 10 degrees, and it represents the cosine of 80 degrees. Likewise, if you want to look at the sine of 10 degrees, you simply read up onto the D scale. If you want to see the cosine of 10 degrees, you read that directly off of this red P scale here. That's the advantage of the P scale. You don't have to move the slide. Normally, you would have to bring this over. You'd read the sine here at 10, and then you'd have to read the cosine all the way on the other side of the slide rule down there. Now, the next scales that we'll have a look at are the T scales, and they're for tangent. On some slide rules, they're divided into two T scales, a T1 and a T2. One will go from 5.7 degrees up to 45 degrees. Another will go from 45 degrees up to the max of about 84.7 degrees. The reason the slide rule stops here on the tangent is as you approach 90 degrees, the tangent rapidly goes to infinity. Now, working together with both the S scale and the T scale is something called the ST scale. This is for something called the small angle approximation. Now, the small angle approximation says that when angles get small, and we'll use below 10 degrees, some people even take it a little higher than that, the sine approximates the tangent, which approximates the angle in radians. And an angle in radians there are two pi radians in 360 degrees. So if you divide pi by 180 and multiply it by degrees, you'll get the number of radians. That's how the ST scale works. And if you read an angle, 
between 0.55 degrees and about 0.574 degrees, you're going to get a sine and a tangent in the form of 0.0 something 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 something. Now let's have a look at the small angle approximation a little bit more. For angles less than about 10, the sine equals the tangent equals the angle in radians, and the second half is the cosine approaches 1. Now you can actually do the math on your calculator to confirm this to you. Now the ST scale starts at 0.55 degrees, and it works its way up to 5.73 or 74 degrees. But I want to draw your attention to something here, and that is this red number right underneath. This is 89.45 degrees. Because as you recall, the S scale only goes up to about 84.5 degrees. Well, what about angles approaching 90 degrees? Those two are small angles, except they're on the cosine side. So in that case, just as with the small angles, when you're dealing with very large angles, the small angle approximation works as well, except it's reversed somewhat. Now, in small angles, the sine and the tangent equal the radians. Now, in the larger angles, the cosine equals the radian, and the sine is approaching 1. Now, the tangent reaches 1 at approximately 45 degrees. And by the time you get up to about 85 degrees, the tangent is approaching 10. Now, when dealing with the tangent of large angles, the numbers get big really quick. When you hit 45 degrees, the tangent hits 1. If you get up to 89 degrees, the tangent is 60. Now, you can't really do large angles and get a tangent on them on a slide rule very efficiently. Sometimes you have to kind of calculate it through the back door. Now, as you recall, the sine would be the opposite over the hypotenuse, or side A over side C. Cosine, likewise, would be side B over side C. And the tangent would be side A over side B. If you know side A and side B, you can get the tangent directly from that. You can also take the sine over the cosine, if those are known values of the angle, and get the tangent from that. Now once again, here's the Aristo Studio 1068, and we're going to calculate the sine and the cosine of 15 degrees. Notice the 15 is in black, and the complementary angle of 75 is in red. Now we can read the sine of 15 degrees directly off the D scale. And it looks like it's just shy of 0 0.25, or excuse me, 0 0.27. Now to get the cosine of 15 degrees, we can either go up to the end, to where we have 75 in black and 15 in red, and read it there. But on this German slide rule, we have a P scale, and all we have to do is read straight up from the 15 to get the cosine of 15 degrees. Now let's check out the ST scale. ST scale is up here on top, and we'll go ahead and we will have a look at 2 degrees. So this is a relatively small angle. And remember, the form is going to be 0, 0.0 something 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 something. You see 2 degrees there in the complementary 88. Now we just read straight down to the D scale. And our sine of 2 degrees is approximately 0, 0.0350. Notice on the small end of the ST scale, 0.55 degrees. You see the complementary angle of 89.45 degrees in red? That would be the cosine of 89.45 degrees, and we would read it the same way. To give you an idea of the magnitude of angles, if you're dealing with 0 to 0 0.6, the tan and the sine are equivalent to the radians of the angle, and they take the form of 0, 0.00 something 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 something. Now, as you get into a larger but still small angle, you're dealing with 0 0.6 to 5.7. The tan and the sine are of the form 0, 0.0 something, 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 and they're equivalent to the radians. The cosine is approaching 1. Now, the tan and the sine and the cosine of 5.7 to 84.5 or so, you just read it right off the scales. Now the form is 0 point something 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 up to about 45 degrees. Now the only change we have at 45 degrees is now the tangent falls in the range of 1 to 10. 
Once you hit 84 degrees, it goes up rapidly. And as you can see, the tangent of 89 degrees is approximately 60. This kind of gives you an idea of the magnitude you're dealing with. Now, our next subject is going to be the arc sign. So let's draw our old friend, the three, four, five triangle. This is a right triangle, of course. Now, if you were to find the sine, cosine, and tangent of angle theta, the calculation is pretty straightforward. It has to do with opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, and opposite over adjacent. That gives us a numerical value. But if we have that numerical value, what angle is angle theta? To find that, we have to use a trigonometric function called the arc sine or the arc cosine or the arc tangent. That takes the number and converts it backwards into the angle. And you can do that on a calculator. Generally, it's a secondary function to the sine, cosine, and tangent. Or you can do it directly on the slide rule. And that's what we're going to do because it's just very simple to do. Just recall how we find a sine, for example. We go to the angle and then we read down to the D scale and we read off the sign. Well, if we have the sign, all we have to do is read that off the D scale and then go up to the sine scale and read off the angle directly. And here we go. There's 0.6, which is the sign, and that corresponds to 35, 36, almost 37, about 36.9. Now we're using the arc sine function in this case, but we could use both the arc cosine and the arc tangent. And as you see, it gives us the correct answer, 36.8698. If you have a slide rule at home, try this with both the tangent and the cosine as well. You'll see it comes back to 36.9 degrees. Well, thank you very much for stopping by today. I hope that gave you a little bit more insight to the usefulness of the slide rule. Now, these are really handy because they don't require batteries. They just fit in your desk or your toolbox. And they're great for quick calculations when three significant digits is really all you need. Now, on our next episode, I'm kind of torn what I want to do because we've got three possibilities, and I'd like some feedback in the comments to let me know which one you want to see first. The first one is called the E6B, which is the flight computer. That's something that pilots use to calculate fuel consumption and time to distance, etc. It's kind of a neat little thing, and I'd like to do a quick video on that. Now, one cool thing about the E6B flight computer is you see it all the time. This is my pilot's watch. That's an E6B flight computer. And when we go over the big one, I'll show you how to use the one on your watch as well. Second, we should have the fuller calculator in. And we can go ahead and go over that. Or we can go to the log log scales on the regular slide rule and learn a little bit about radiometric dating. You ever wonder how they figured out how old pieces of charcoal or pottery were, they used a slide rule for that. And we can also do some statistical work like a geometric mean versus an average. So let me know which one you want to see next. We're going to do all of them. Just tell me which one you want to see first. So take care, guys.